In today's weekend news roundup, BVI Registrar General and stalwart Rotarian Mrs. Stephanie Ben has died. Amory and Vanterpool appointed as Deputy Commissioners, while UK Trevelon appointed Acting Assistant Commissioner. Kawa Cornwall and Kadeem Fred identified as the fatal victims of the recent shooting. Public Officer Lorna Stevens arrested and charged with breach of trust. Concerns raised about active bloggers sitting on jurors. The new act should cater to residents on the sister islands as well. And mass policy for government officers has been lifted effective November 1st. Premier Wheatley and Health Minister to attend UK OT Joint Ministerial Council in London. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 Weekend News Roundup returns. Choose your mix, choose your flavor. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works. Welcome everybody. It's Saturday, October 29th, 2022. I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. A happy Saturday to one and all. Thank you so much for joining us. This is your weekly news roundup, bringing you the top stories of this past week. 38-year-old Kawa Cornwell of Longbush and 28-year-old Kadeem Fred of Longlook have been identified as the two victims who succumbed to their injuries following the most recent fatal shooting in East End. This was confirmed by the major crime team of the Rural Virgin Islands Police Force, which said two other persons were also injured during the incident. In an official quote, they said, the two other male victims injured in the shooting are both in stable condition. One of the injured is a minor. Commissioner of Police Mark Collins described the early evening assault as brazen and reckless, adding that he hopes members of the public who are aware of the perpetrator or perpetrators will come forward quickly with information. Commissioner Mark Collins said, and I quote, So many more persons could have lost their lives during the early evening hours of this vicious assault. It shows a grave disregard for human life not often seen in this territory, which impacts the entire community. We are asking for the public's help in identifying the person or persons responsible. Any information is considered valuable at this point. Now also appealing for more information on the incident is the major crime team who was asking the residents for their assistance if anyone with information relating to the incident would be forthcoming. They said, and I quote, witnesses are also being asked to come forward with information. Persons of, with information, sorry, can contact the major crime team at 368-5682 or the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Intelligent Unit at 368-9339. Moving right along, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force confirmed with our newsroom that public officer within the Ministry of Education, Ms. Lorna Stevens, has been arrested and charged for breach of trust in connection with investigations pertaining to the Elmore Stout High School perimeter wall. Police stated in an official comment, and I quote, police can confirm that Lorna Stevens was charged, arrested and charged for breach of trust by a public officer. She was granted bail. No further information is available at this time. Stevens is the second individual to be arrested and charged in connection with the perimeter wall investigations. The first being Mr. Kelvin Thomas, 55, of Chalwell Estate, Tortola. Now, viewers, Thomas was charged in June of 2022 with obtaining property by deception, making a false statement to a public officer, and possession of the proceeds of criminal conduct. Stevens was called as a witness in the recently conducted Commission of Inquiry hearings. Now, as part of the Commission of Inquiry recommendations, investigations were conducted for a full review of the perimeter wall. Beginning next month, public officers and residents conducting a business in government offices will no longer be mandated to wear a mask. 
This follows the discontinuation of the mask policy for public officers and offices, which, according to the Deputy Governor, Mr. David D. Archer Jr., comes into effect from November 1st. He explained that the Public Service instituted an extension of the mask policy mandate for three to six months after it was initially lifted from public places on June 15th. Now, considering the high interaction of public officers with the public, especially frontline support, receptionists, and other officers who give direct and regular service to external clients. Deputy Governor said, and I quote, as the Deputy Governor, discussions regarding developing and instituting a mask policy for public officers and offices in the absence of a legal mandate were conducted with senior leaders of the public service, noting public and private organizations were still allowed to set their own policies and face coverings. The Deputy Governor added that the choice will now be up to each individual whether they decide to wear a mask in public offices if they deem it necessary for their safety and peace of mind. Reports have confirmed the passing of Mrs. Stephanie Ben in Puerto Rico. This occurred on October 24, 2022. Ben served as the Registrar General of the Virgin Islands and was also a stalwart Rotarian. She served as past president of the Rotary Club of Rotown and an active member of the Rotary Club of Tortola. As a result of her passing, of course, the Civil Registry and Passport Office was closed the following day. Tributes have since poured in from persons throughout the community paying tribute to the life and contributions of Mrs. Stephanie Ben, a stalwart civil servant and community leaners. leaders. Sorry, the owners, management, and staff at CCT, BVI Cable TV, and of course, Tweet4 Media express our very sincere condolences to the family of the late Stephanie Ben. As it pertains to the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, St. Clair Armory and Jacqueline Vanterpool have been appointed as deputy commissioners in the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. This was confirmed in a media release by the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, which said the deal was confirmed to the positions on Friday, October 24th. Now, Armory and Vanterpool had previously served as superintendents of police, but were acting in the post of assistant commissioner and deputy commissioner, respectively, since 2022. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force also revealed viewers that a former UK Superintendent Pam Trevelon has been appointed to the post of Assistant Commissioner. Trevelon was previously Superintendent of Devon and Cornwall Police within the United Kingdom and had recently served in St. Helena in the Falkland Islands and the Isles of Man. The force said Omri, Vanspool and Trevelon will commence their new roles in November. Speaking on the appointments was Governor His Excellency John Ranking, CMG, who said he was pleased with the three appointments. He said, and I quote, I'm delighted that we have appointed three excellent senior officers to these important leadership roles. They each bring a wide range of skills and experience to the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force and will continue to help keep the British Virgin Islands safe and secure. Deputy Speaker and Territorial At-Large Representative, the Honorable Neville Smith, believes that measures should be included in the new Jury Act to exclude active bloggers from sitting as jurors in court cases. Smith's concerns were raised during a recent debate within the House of Assembly, where he expressed that the new provisions in the Jury Act 2022 create new categories of persons which will expand the jury pool to potentially include persons who may also be bloggers. He once warned that something should be included within the Act to assist with controlling who is selected as a juror. Madam Speaker, I want to, I want to bring something in the open as well. We talk about expanding the jurors list. But one of the things that concerns me the most is when we do this, we also open up a room for more people to be a part of this jurors list, but there's something called blogs, the bloggers. And I'm wondering how will we control that with a juror list? Where we don't know who these jurors are, we don't know who are blogging, so we don't know who the jurors will be, and they might be still blogging and they're sitting on a case. That's one thing I would like to bring up during the committee stage, to see how we could tackle something like that, because I think it will be a problem where you have a juror who is a blogger, who's not using his real name, 
but sits on a case and is blogging, Madam Speaker. So that's one thing I'd like to bring up during the committee stage. Also debating the Jury Act 2022 was Knight District Representative the Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, who highlighted certain aspects of the bill that he believes should have measures in place that caters to residents on the sister islands. Now, viewers, he pointed to Section 43, Number 2 of the Jury Act 2022, which speaks to the compensation fees that will be paid to jurors to assist them with conducting their duties. Wheatley said for jurors on the sister islands, compensation fees should be paid upfront since it is a very costly for these residents to travel to Totola for the court proceedings. Everybody knows that traveling from a sister island, any activity on the mainland is, can be expensive. And the further away you are, the more expensive it can be. And if you get section 42, number two, the fees under subsection 1 may include compensation for a loss of time and expenses paid or incurred in going to, attending at, or returning from the court. There are no courts on version order, on any gather, sorry. The one on version order, I'm not even sure it's functional about various stories, if it's functional or not. So, automatically, those two islands there we're going, are going to have to incur significant expense. Okay, it didn't say exactly when the fees were to be paid, if you get these things before or after. But if you ask someone to travel many times from Enigala to attend court, that policy may rack up significant expenses just to attend court. And I think that would be unfair if it's done afterwards. And the same thing would apply to Virgin Order. As it pertains to jurors being penalized for not attending court, Wheatley said there may be special circumstances that prevent those on the sister islands from attending. He said provisions should be included in the act to exempt sister island jurors from being penalized in such instances. Again, there needs to be some kind of a caveat in there. A, per a person's duly summoned to attend as a juror at an institute of the court who does not attend Blah, 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 may be fined. Again, Madam Speaker, we have to be considerate of persons on the sister islands who may be serving during adverse weather conditions. Yes, you may save a million persons in the car, but what if there's no, no way of getting the message across that due to these particular conditions here, I am unable to attend? Madam Speaker, I look forward to, to addressing this here in committee stage, as again, we have to make sure that when we are making these laws, they apply as equally across the entire territory. Viewers, that is it for our weekend news roundup, of course, bringing you the top stories of this past week, just in case you missed them. Reporting for 284 News out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands, I'm Ron Grant. You've been watching 284 Media, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284 Media. Do have a beautiful rest of the weekend. A happy Saturday to each and every one of you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hooked up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home. Keeping out of trouble, me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my city life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live. Bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. Pfft. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Papa 